It was a little known fact, only known to those closest to her, that Helen could safely be called a pothead. Now it wasn't in the usual way one usually would label such a thing. After being basically dependent on painkillers for decades and still being in agony, her doctor had suggested something called medical marijuana. Of course, being the overly responsible person that she was, she hadn't been too keen on taking drugs of that sort, but her doctor had sat her down and talked her through everything that was involved with it, discussed the pros and cons, and the different types and varieties that were available. It was an avenue Helen had practically no knowledge or experience in, which in a medical sense was a rarity, and the mere notion that she would no longer be tethered to pain meds was a reality she wanted to be a part of. So, after a relatively short process of getting improved, which was no problem for her symptomatically speaking, and receiving her card, Helen became a proud supporter of medical marijuana. At the beginning, it was exactly as she had been prescribed it, holding the filthy oil in her mouth and taking only appropriate puffs from a THC vape, but once she saw the dramatic improvement in her symptoms while it was in her system, and with Pearl's begrudged approval, she began branching out into learning how to make edibles and how to roll joints. It was only occasionally that she would use for any reason that wasn't purely for pain or anxiety, but over time she felt comfortable enough doing it recreationally as well as. Of course, she knew to be smart about it, she was still a medical practitioner and couldn't be off her head high on the job. If she ever used during her work week, it would only be at night and at a low level so she had time to sober up before morning. Her off week was the only time she ever used recreationally, and certainly not every day. It was definitely a better time than getting drunk after all. It was another fact, a little more well known, that Pearl sometimes missed the states. Regardless of how much happier she was now in Australia, and she didn't have any living family members that she knew well enough to care about back there, it had still been her home for all of her childhood, and somewhere she remembered fondly at times. Helen couldn't imagine leaving everything she'd ever known to make that journey. Couldn't fathom it. And something she could offer to make things more comfortable for her was to make a trip back at least once a year so Pearl could reconnect. And even if there were no family members waiting for her, she did have some old friends it was always nice to see again. Helen couldn't bring her cannabis, obviously. But it was certainly an easier task to get a hold of more in America, so she wouldn't be without a relief for long after touching down. It was usually one of their first stops, if she were being honest. Pearl couldn't help but feel uncomfortable every time Helen got high. Drugs were a definite sore spot for her after her younger sister's addiction. But she knew that nothing like that was occurring with her wife. She knew it was prescribed, and that she needed it to be functional without her usual regime of pain meds. It was an entirely different situation, but it still set a knot of dread in her chest every time Helen looked at her, with those reddened eyes giggling and spaced out. Once or twice she brought it up, but she knew it was selfish to ask her not to take something that was truly helping her, and the conversation never really went anywhere. Helen assured her that she would try not to get high enough that it was obvious around her, but that wasn't always a guarantee, and even though she knew her reasoning, it still kind of hurt that Pearl would even think to want her to stop. It was a natural substance she was using as of the multitude of narcotics she had been hooked on for so long. She'd been basically addicted, and now she was doing something healthier that actually helped, and now Pearl didn't want her to use it? But our two lovely ladies had grown a lot in their time, and instead of letting this conflict of interest back and forth any discourse, they talked about it. Helen sat her down and explained very gently why she was doing this, how it helped her, all the pros and cons, basically what her doctor had done for her, and Pearl had listened respectfully, for explaining why her taking drugs of any kind was upsetting to her. Above all else, they listened to each other, and they could come to an understanding that Helen needed this so she could thrive instead of just survive, and that she could do it a bit quieter sometimes. It was understood that she deserved to be able to enjoy it the way she wanted to every now and then, and ultimately they were both able to come to an understanding about the situation, and agree to disagree at times. Obviously feelings still came up around it, but Pearl could be rest assured that her concerns were taken on board and actively acknowledged, never to be ignored. And that was enough for her.
From the moment the couple opened their eyes at 3am that morning, it had been go, 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 rushing out the house with their luggage and boarding passes in tow. One of Helen's nurse friends from work who had just been getting off their shift about that time had graciously offered to give them a ride to the airport, and she'd been waiting by the curb to have a laugh at the girl's shared looks of frazzled exhaustion, and she wasn't looking much better herself, and got them to the terminal in a jiffy. Airport layouts and getting around in them usually left them both quite confused, so they had gotten there hours earlier than necessary to ensure they were on time, especially as Helen was normally unable to keep up with Belle's pace. So coupled out with having woken up all of 15 minutes ago and needing to also walk with her cane, these trips were exceedingly hard on her body, so any help was utilised. The extra time was necessary. In their own time, Helen and Pearl checked in their bags, eventually got through security, and settled in front of their gate with bagels and coffees to wait for their flight to be called. They would be on three flights before they were there, a full 23 hours of travel, and then commuting to their temporary abode. They decided to rent a tiny home for a week, and then spend the remaining four days with Pearl's childhood friend and their spouse, Sebastian and Clem, as they had on their previous trips. That all equated to a hell of a lot of travelling they had ahead of them, which neither were particularly looking forward to. But if it meant that Pearl got to experience such an integral part of her character again, then Helen would go to the end of the earth for her. They both slept through the first flight, only two hours long, and after sprinting to their next gate with barely a minute to spare, had fallen into their seats with hopes they could sleep again. But no such luck. This second flight was almost 11 hours long, so that left a lot of time for their bodies to protest. A few hours in and Helen was fidgeting, painfully stiff and descending into the familiar but unwelcome pit of dizziness that always came from motion sickness. She had an aisle seat so was able to get up every now and then, but she swore she could feel every tiny movement of the floor beneath her every time she took a step, so eventually she conceded to just sit in her seat and hope to god that she wasn't about to make a scene. She sat with her eyes closed and head back while she shivered nauseously, her sick stomach staring as if it were inside a washing machine in the highest setting, Pearl cuddling into her seat and kissing her shoulder, unable to really do a lot to help her. At least when driving you can pull over if necessary. She shook her head at the suggestion of taking her motion sickness meds, but did accept the provided meal. There was no use in starving herself or even touch down, and she was no longer the type. It didn't take long, however, for an acidic lunch to come spilling from her mouth into the paper sickness bag from the seat pocket, along with her impromptu breakfast. All Pearl had been able to do was pull her towards her chest and use the thankfully provided blanket to sort of shield her sickened wife from view, rubbing her back and talking her through it. Thankfully, it was a pretty empty flight with no one else in their particular row, so when Pearl had gotten the attention of an attendant so they could take the bag and bring her some tissues and water, she had helped Helen, who was still shaking and looking rather embarrassed, to the tiny bathroom so she could freshen up. She was quite tired after she finished rinsing her mouth out and cleaning her face, so when they were able to return to their seats again, she elected for the window seat so she could more easily hide it if she got sick again, bundling up beneath the blanket so she could rest a bit, hopefully get in a little more sleep. Pearl had been happy to have her curled up against her side, spent quite a while just watching her with a contented smile, and eventually when she grew weary of this activity, she pulled out a Nintendo Switch and iPod to occupy herself. And things were fine for a while, Helen eventually beginning to lightly snore against her arm and Pearl making good progress on her Animal Crossing island. But the moment that Helen began moaning into her arm when a slight turbulence rocked the plane, struggling to wake herself up and reach for another bag through the mist of unconsciousness, something changed in Pearl. Something she thought was inevitable, but still so highly unnecessary. An aura was settling in. She would soon be struck with a migraine, and when she and her highly motion-sick wife still had 12 hours of flying left ahead of them, that was the absolute last thing they needed. She bit her lip nervously as she grabbed the bag for Helen and pushed it into her hand, not enjoying the thought that she may need one of those too before their time was through. She would take her migraine pills as soon as she had gotten Helen settled again. It was only dry heaving and some spitting this time, however, as the first time it seemed to more or less empty her out, so Helen had more or less just fallen right back asleep afterwards as there was nothing to clean up. Pearl had been silently grateful for that, and had taken her meds before putting away her electronics. It wouldn't do her any harm to just close her eyes and try to sleep. Thus far, the pain hadn't started just yet, but she was gradually growing dizzier herself, and her vision was going funny, reducing to a lit tunnel. When it truly began, she would be forced to sleep anyway. She may as well get a head start. When Helen's breath had evened out once again and she was sure she was asleep, Pearl pulled some of the blanket across her lap and cuddled into her, the two of them disappearing into each other as they did their best to sleep through their ailments to make this journey at all more bearable, all the while their bed softly rocked.
The next six hours were miserable for Pearl. While Helen was thankfully able to mostly stay asleep for the remainder of the trip, the migraine had well and truly crept in, and Pearl kept being woken from her shallow sleep by the nauseating throbs of agony wriggling around the left side of her brain. Every time the pain hit her senses, she wanted to cry, hunching forward, clutching her head, a hint of a whimper breaching her tongue. Every tiny sound around her felt as if it should surely crush her, culminating together and bearing down upon her. It sent thundercracks of pain lacing through her skull, as did every shred of light. The cabin lights were thankfully down by this point, but that didn't matter much when her head generated its own torturous light show every time she closed her eyes, which right now was unavoidable. Her meds didn't appear to be doing all that much for her, most unfortunately, but she supposed it made sense being in such an overstimulating environment. Now if only she could turn off the fucking engines roaring all around her, just for a moment. She drifted on the verge of a sleep and awake, never truly dipping down beneath either side, and it was torture. All she wanted was to sleep, but even when she fell enough to dream, all her mind seemed capable of producing for her was a seizure-inducing nightmare of oversaturated colours and flashing lights, dreams which left her trembling in the glow of agony left in her and its wake. Acid constantly burned the back of her throat, but she never threw up, which she guessed she was vaguely thankful for. Vomiting during a migraine was a misery she wouldn't wish upon many, but there were a select few she could think of that probably deserved it, and fuck, a whole lot more. But alas, scientists haven't invented a way you can transfer your pain to another yet, so unfortunately it was a misery they probably would never experience if they were lucky enough. And Pearl had been thinking about these select few people more and more often lately, but she couldn't work out why. Couldn't work out why she was being plagued with nightmares of them, with intrusive thoughts tailored toward her specific traumas. She had even been kept up one or two nights recently with memories of how she and Helen used to be towards each other, unable to convince her heart to slow down or to stop shaking while her wife lay blissfully unaware of the turmoil she was under right next to her. She knew that her trauma sometimes bloomed back up around the time she travelled back to America. She had been a deeply traumatised little girl and young adult there, and while she knew logically that that hadn't really stopped being that even after leaving, even became more so in Australia, but the States had been where it all began. Her beloved dad was buried there. She hadn't even been in the country when he had passed. It was such a hassle actually trying to get back, and every time she visited his tombstone, she couldn't help but be disgusted with herself. Helen was always there to reassure her that it hadn't been her fault and that she couldn't have possibly done anything any better or any different. She of course knew how she felt to a degree, but at least Helen had been in the same country when her parents had died. All of these emotions and feelings she could usually more or less shrug off, these visits forced her to confront them head on, and she couldn't be more grateful for that or more miserable. As selfish as she felt in doing this, she forced herself to shove these memories away for now. Her head could only handle so much at the moment, and right now all of it had to be focused on the migraine. She of course didn't want it to be, but her body decided what it wanted regardless of her actual desires, and so with tears so dearly wanting to leave her forced shut eyes, she instead shoved herself into sleep, into the mess of visual confusion awaiting her. At least these dreams had nothing to do with trauma. It was to a gentle hand jostling her shoulder that Helen groggily awoke. Mumbling deliriously, she shifted from sleep into being awake. Come on, sweet, second light's already done. She heard Pearl whisper to her, and she couldn't help but smile, reaching forward with her eyes still closed to cuddle into her wife. <clears throat> Good. She sighed, so grateful that the plane was no longer moving. The dizziness normally stuck around for a while after she came to a stop, but at least it wasn't going to be added to for a while, so she could handle this. Her abs were sore as she stretched as well as she could manage in the cramped seat, eager to stand up and properly unstiffen herself, probably get something to chew on to get rid of the stale taste of acid still clinging to her dry mouth. Certainly not something she would be likely to throw back up on the next flight, maybe gum? She was so locked in her thoughts and getting to stand that she barely took notice of Pearl beside her, who could tell she looked as awful as she felt. She knew the presence of migraine had caused the blood in her face to flee for fear of also becoming virulent, and she could tell her eyes were slightly bugging. The lights were back on and everyone was moving around them to disembark, seemingly screaming at each other to communicate. The airport would be even worse. Fuck, she felt sick. Yeah, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, how's about we get off? Come on, Helen. She asserted perhaps brusker than she had intended, pulling Helen onto her feet and politely shoving her way onto the aisle to disembark. Helen clutched her cane and carry-on, hurrying behind her while frowning at her back. She could tell something was off, but couldn't work out what. 
It didn't take long for her to find out, though. When Pearl immediately made a beeline for the closest bathroom and they had finally gotten through the corridor to get inside the airport, walking urgently through the crowd and disappearing into a stall. At first, Helen assumed she just needed to go, and accepting that, had leant back against the wall to wait for her to finish up. But quite soon, she heard a cough a bit too heavily to be normal, and then the awful sound of her gagging followed shortly after. Pearl? She asked worriedly, stepping over to the closed door and leaning against it. She could hear Pearl's almost frantic breaths, just as they caught and she loudly retched over the toilet. The dreadful noise slightly echoed with the acoustics of the bathroom, and Helen couldn't help but wince at how painful it sounded. Other patrons gave her looks asking if she was alright, and Helen shrugged, but dismissed them. I... And Pearl struggled to get out. I don't, don't think I actually can. Oh, that's okay, sweetheart. Do what you need to. You're alright. Helen comforted her as best she could from the other side of the door, chest tightening with worry for what could be wrong. If she had to guess, it was a migraine, but she couldn't be sure just yet. Not until she finished up and let her take a look at her. When Pearl was eventually able to pry herself away from the toilet, not having been successful in bringing anything up, and emerged pale and miserably holding herself, Helen had known she had been correct in her suspicions, immediately wrapping her arms around her and gently cupping the back of her head. Oh, babe. Helen sighed as she held her, noting with sympathy how badly she was trembling. Pearl rested her forehead in the crook of her neck and leaned quite heavily against her, on the cusp of tears. I have a migraine. She moaned pitifully, and Helen nodded as she clicked her tongue. Yeah, I could guess, you poor thing. Despite still being extremely nauseated, all Pearl currently wanted was to sit down, so Helen gave her her cane to make the walk more manageable, and supported her from the bathroom to their final gate, all thought of stopping for gum void from her mind. Not when her girl was ailing like this. As soon as they found their gate, Helen firmly sat Pearl down and took the seat right next to her, and Pearl immediately tilted to lean almost her entire body weight into Helen's side, head sagging over her shoulder as she felt for her hand, which Pearl accepted in an instant. Sore eyes hanging low, she groaned, allowing her other hand to rest against a churning belly. Helen watched her with pity clearly visible in her face. Can I get you anything, love, at all? You need something to take meds with? She asked, hopeful of any way she could help, but could only worry at how listlessly Pearl was draped over her, and at how slow it took her to work apart her mouth to respond. I don't think I could keep it down if I tried right now. Helen pulled her in closer at that pressing a few soft kisses against her forehead and rubbing the top of her head. Fuck, this flight can't come and end any sooner, hey? And boy, it could not. Pearl could barely walk, and getting them checked in into their seats fell squarely onto Helen, who could barely make sense of it in normal circumstances. She thanked God she had declined the use of electronic passes as Pearl had suggested they use. She was flat out working the physical versions, much less trying to operate her phone like that at the same time. But before long, they were stumbling down the tiny aisle onto their last flight, and then settling into their seats. This time, for their six-hour trip, Pearl opted for the window seat, Helen took the middle, and a male stranger of advanced age and mayonnaise complexion had the aisle. As Helen prompted Pearl to crawl past the man, she couldn't help but notice how he glared at her. And perhaps this could have been a generally sour disposition, but while she struggled to hoist her cane into the overhead compartment without whacking anyone in the narrow walkway, she couldn't push aside the concern that it was bigoted in nature. It was exceedingly clear they were romantically involved, and older folk tend to be less forgiving in that department, but if he just kept his mouth shut and left them alone, she wouldn't make a deal of it. The less hassle, the better, especially if a migraine had to be involved. Every movement, every sound, every sliver of light, all of it worsened the pain. Her brain was going to explode, surely at this rate it would make sense. It was trying everything in its power to escape her own head, any which way it could hazard. Her mind even dulled in an attempt to help her disassociate away from itself, to protect her from the worst of it. But every dizzying throb sent her awake again. This is how the first hour ended up going, flip-flopping between leaving and violently re-entering her body, until the pain began to escape her in another way. As she dizzily resurfaced back into bodily bedlam, she was acutely aware of her trembling abdominal muscles visibly pulling inward and the ensuing surge of boiling liquid which rushed up her windpipe. Darting a frantic look across at her dozing seatmates while she groggily brought her hand up to cover her clenched shut mouth, she knew that being sick in front of the stranger would be unavoidable, and with that mental confirmation she rushed to yank out a paper bag and to get it over her mouth in time. She was just barely successful. 
immediately vomiting a disgusting wave of acidic soup into the bag, audibly wincing at the earthquake that sent off rumbling throughout her head. Her convulsive throat burned and her head roared. She blindly reached for Helen's arm to lightly shake it in an effort to get her attention, sniffling and readying herself for her belly to squeeze up more of its content. A scene quite similar to what occurred when Helen had been sick on the last flight took place now. Once she had been roused from her light slumber and Pearl had come to a stop after gagging unproductively a few more times, she had caught the attention of an attendant to take the bag and gotten her to the bathroom to clean up. Pearl had been even less responsive than Helen had been, however, and Helen realised she would have to do most of the work as Pearl Millie stood before her, miserably holding herself and staring at the floor, shivering and swaying under her own weight. When Helen gently cupped her chin to wipe a wet piece of toilet paper across her lips, she was overcome with loving concern when Pearl stared back at her with nothing reflected in her eyes, as if a light had been shut out behind them. She knew the look all too well. She was in so much pain that her brain was shutting down to protect herself from it. Helen knew that Pearl was faced with that stony stare all too often, any time her pain flared for that matter. It was not often at all, however, that Helen herself saw it. Thankfully, the migraines were far less frequent at this point in their lives and they were generally pretty well managed when they did roll in. This had to be the worst one in a while, during your annual trip, no less. Oh, my poor dear, she cooed as she cleaned her mouth. You look absolutely terrible. Pearl felt it too, unsure how she was actually standing right now when her body felt like it was powering down. The only things that existed in her world at that moment was pain and the nausea that accompanied it. Without the slightest change in expression or any hint at all, she turned her head and threw up a thin stream of orange sick into the sink right next to her, coughing raggedly while Helen exclaimed in surprise, quickly switching tactics to pulling her long hair away from her face and holding her steady with an arm secured across her chest. It was only because people began knocking on the door that they eventually left the bathroom, otherwise they would have happily camped out there for the remainder of the flight, especially seeing as Helen had began becoming dizzy again before too long. Unfortunately, there being something wrong with the other didn't mean your own body would behave for their sake. Upon returning to their seats, their fellow passenger was loudly complaining to the people in front of them about the disruptive dykes he was being forced to sit with, and as they arrived at the row, Helen was in just bad enough of a mood to not take this too kindly. Coaxing Pearl to go ahead and crawl through to her seat, she roughly scooted past him to plop into her own seat and turned to rest her cheek in her upturned palm, fixing it with a mix of a scowl and a smile. Ugh, I gotta love elders thinking the world turns only for them, based solely on the fact they've lived longer. She crooned cruelly, and before he could have time to respond, she was continuing. If you truly think complaining so loudly about two people minding their damn business, which is what you should be doing, isn't being disruptive, as you say, then your advanced time on Earth has been for nothing. And using slurs? Really? Real mature there. If I was a little younger, I'd probably call you a boomer or something, but my time on Earth actually made me compassionate. Pearl groaned behind her, presumably from the volume of her voice, and she winced before finishing. So if you don't mind, sir, my wife has a migraine and could really use you not being so disruptive. The man merely glared at her in response, grumbling under his breath as he jabbed at the call button above him, again loudly complaining about them to the attendant, complete with two slurs this time, and requested to be moved. They of course allowed it, and were sure to come by again afterward to make sure the girls were okay after such a rude encounter. Apart from requesting some extra sickness bags and water, they assured her that they were fine. The guy ended up leaving, so why were they to complain? And now they could try and sleep through the rest of the flight. Surprisingly, it seemed that after this altercation, they were both just tired enough that they were actually successful in their endeavour, and it felt like a second later that the plane had touched down and they could finally disembark. Come on, sweetie, nice and slow for me. Helen instructed her when they had finally arrived at their carousel to retrieve their luggage. Pearl leaned heavily on the cane that had pretty much become hers for the time being while Helen flagged down their suitcases, struggling a bit with the two of them, but nevertheless being successful. While she was beginning to feel better after finally being on solid ground again, the same could not be said of Pearl, whose despondent look of disassociation hadn't drained it all from her still horribly pale face and she seemed to be using every last bit of her strength holding herself upright. Helen yawned as she sat down to pull out her designated American phone, and they made this journey enough times to warrant it, checking the date and time. God, it doesn't become any less disorienting seeing the time difference for the first time again. She laughed tiredly, rubbing her face and yawning again. 
It didn't matter that they had slept through the majority of the past 23 hours. The jet lag and differing ailments had done a great job in draining the both of their energies regardless. For Pearl, it didn't matter as much. She was free to sleep in the passenger seat, but Helen had to wake herself up enough to be able to drive them safely to the tiny home, also to navigate their way to the car rental counter and juggle the luggage, and... She shook her head and got to her feet, bouncing slightly on the balls of her feet to psych herself up. Ignoring the way her body felt as if it was ready for bed despite it being broad daylight outside, she gathered all their things up and urged Pearl to follow behind her as she set off for the counter, doing her best not to stumble. Do you think you can try eating anything, sweetheart? You haven't been able to. Helen trailed off when Pearl shook her head straight away, sighing sadly. The half a bagel Pearl had eaten hadn't stayed down for long at all, and she'd ultimately ended the day emptier than she had started. Helen at least had been drinking water, the same couldn't be said for her wife. She didn't seem keen on changing that now, and Helen was truly beginning to worry about her. Usually, she would at least try to get something down, but this time it seemed she was more likely to starve the pain away. But that wasn't something she could condone. Hmm, sweet thing. You really ought to try something. It's not healthy to- I wanna go see my dad. Pearl suddenly interrupted. The first real sentence she'd spoken in hours. Helen couldn't be more surprised if she tried. Huh? Now? But I thought you'd want to get to the home so you could go to bed. Pearl did want that. So dearly. But she'd already been on her home soil for an hour, and the thing she wanted most of all was to go see him. Those thoughts she had been fighting so desperately against had never truly left her mind, and it felt selfish for her to take care of herself when she should surely be facing her problems instead. It was the middle of the day after all, it wouldn't be socially acceptable to go to bed yet anyway for quite a few more hours. Her dad wouldn't want her to run from her feelings either. Surely she remembered something about that. She nodded carefully so as to not exacerbate the pain. Please, Helen, I need to. She almost begged, and Helen straightened at the unfamiliar tone, sensing there was something deep going on she wasn't fully letting on to. If she felt like she had to go now for whatever reason, then she wasn't about to stop her. That wasn't what wives did. Alright, Pearl, we can go. But please, stay with me. No, Pearl couldn't. She was powerless to the emotions which tore her soul apart as they walked up to his grave, barely able to make it the few extra steps it would take to be in front of him. Helen guided her the rest of the way, keeping a firm hold on her upper arm as she knew she was liable to her knees giving out whenever they did this. She hated the way Pearl's entire body rippled with shivers, to a visible degree. Hated how weak her conscious movements were, as opposed to the ferocity of the unconscious. <laughs> God, Daddy! Pearl gritted out through teeth that had automatically begun chattering as soon as the couple had entered the cemetery, her broken heart attempting to beat clear out of her fraying chest. Feel what you need to run, but stay with me, please. I mean it. Helen instructed her with clear emotion muddying her voice. She fucking hated seeing her like this. The migraine felt as if it was transferring bits of its pain throughout her body while Pearl stood hunched over his side, almost hugging the cold, etched stone. First it drained to her chest, then her jaw, her shoulders, deeper in her chest, the back of her head, so deep in her chest, the bridge of her nose, her tongue. She became a walking migraine while her mind turned itself to a gelatinous soup of sparking nerve endings and unfulfilled promises. She hadn't been there in his final days, his final moments. He'd probably forgotten she existed. If still plagued with a demon that was Alzheimer's and rest, he was probably confused why he kept coming in by his spot, and why she broke her heart over him again and again. Why should she care? But she did. She had never stopped. She loved him so deeply, and knew deep down that he had to. He had just been too sick. Not himself, or at least that's what everyone told her. If unburdened, they could have been beautiful, but they had never gotten the chance. He was such a beautiful man, so why couldn't he be here for her to tell him that? Why had whatever created him written him out of her story so early on? To make her stronger, make her what she was today? But hadn't even done that. She felt like a child again as she couldn't cry but dearly wanted to. She hurt enough, so why couldn't she show it? Daddy, why can't I cry? That was all she could manage. Before her chest suddenly pitched and she instinctively straightened, frantically reaching into her pocket for the bag she had stuffed into it and opening it, turning away from him just in case. She heavily coughed into it, and Helen recovered just in time for her to react, holding her steady while Pearl struggled to bring anything up. 
but her stomach was long empty. All she could manage was a few wimpy dry heaves before she conceded it wasn't happening, and she shakily pocketed the bag again. Before she'd even regained her breath, she'd been turning back to him, but Helen stopped her, holding onto her wrists so she couldn't turn and was forced to face her. Pearl, you know I would normally not discourage you from grieving or feeling. She started firmly, hoping Pearl couldn't feel her trembling. But this is so clearly not good for you right now. You are so obviously not well, and your dad understands that and would much rather you take care of yourself rather than literally make yourself sick over this. We have time to come back if you feel up to it later, but I really think you need to be taken to the home now. But- No buts, babe. You cannot handle this right now. I'm sorry, but I won't help you hurt yourself like this. But- Pearl said in a voice so maddeningly weak. How can I just leave? Just, just go to bed like all this didn't happen. Helen shrugged sadly. We live in the same house both my parents died in. And believe me, you do just go to bed like none of it happened. Trust me, love, I, I would have never slept again if not. The rest of the drive home was almost entirely silent, as the couple wordlessly thought about what had just transpired. Well, Helen did. Pearl, thank God, had knocked out pretty much as soon as the car started, just as she hoped she would. Helen didn't know what was causing this particular visit to be starting off so sour, but it was undeniable. Much like the undeniable rumbling in her belly, she was fucking starving. They knew it was best not to stop anywhere. The sooner she could get Pearl into that damn bed, the better. It was almost maddening how much Pearl was fighting her on that. She knew these trips could bring up a lot in Pearl, absolutely knew and accepted that fact, but she was truly unaware as to the current extent. All she knew was what she had been presented thus far, and that was far enough. She would have to order in later. God, was she fucking hungry. Almost overrode everything else. Almost. Oh my god, babe! Helen exclaimed quietly hours later, sitting in the darkened bed area of the tiny home right beside Pearl, who had crawled right under the covers as soon as they had arrived, still in the hoodie and jeans from the plane, and was currently curled up with her terrible head in Helen's lap. She hummed and was questioning, and Helen excitedly continued. This is almost like Uber Eats service where they can bring you edibles. That fucking rocks, now we don't need to go to the dispensary. Pearl just groaned in response. She guessed she was happy for her, but eh, not really. Not enough right now, anyway. As Helen happily placed an order she didn't read aloud, Pearl thought differently, however. Helen did weed to feel better, right? To not be on pain meds? So, incidentally, it could maybe work for her, yes? Work to drive this fucked out migraine away, which her normal meds had not even began to touch? She was willing to try anything to take the pain away, but... Really, was she willing to do this? She'd sworn to never. Helen? She began nervously, not moving from her position as she was too embarrassed to face her. Yeah, princess? Helen responded absentmindedly, already thinking about which brand she wanted to use that night. Ooh, and what she might get to satisfy her munchies. She played with Pearl's hair as she continued on, just as nervous as before. I was... May maybe... Wondering if, if I could, you know, m maybe. Helen paused in her hand's movement and inquiringly peered down at her wife, who seemed to be fidgeting and fighting herself on something. Yeah? She pried, and Pearl suddenly blurted out all in a rush. I wondered if I could ma ma maybe try some weed to help the pain. Helen's heart slammed to a stop, before chugging back into life tenfold. Butterflies erupted in her tummy as she realized what Pearl was saying. Her face broke out in the biggest grin and she answered, perhaps louder than intended. Wait, are you serious? You actually- you want- Oh my god, yes, of course you can! Oh my god, I am actually so excited, you absolutely can try some weed, Pearl! Pearl gulped at the pain which strangled her brain at how loud she was being. She also couldn't help but smile herself at how excited she had just made Helen with her willingness to try. Her unbridled joy was always something she held so very dear. As it wasn't something they got- as it wasn't something they got to experience nearly enough. Her head began vibrating as Helen's lap started to quiver in elation, and through the glaze sitting thickly behind her eyes, she slowly rolled into her back and nervously smiled up at her. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll do whatever you suggest. 
You know when you ask a science fiction nerd a simple question about their favourite franchise and their face lights up and you just know you're going to be left staying there for the next few hours listening to the ramblings of their funny little brains? I am bitches. In this case, Helen was also bitches, and Pearl just knew she was about to get a crash course in the ins and outs of her favourite weed types. She just hoped there wasn't going to be a test, because there was no way she would be able to keep up right now. Well, Helen began, and Pearl rolled her eyes and grinned knowingly. She fucking knew it. It really depends on what you actually want to get out of it. Like, if you only wanted to take the pain away, I could suggest an oil. But if you wanted to actually, you know. She flourished a hand like the fucking dork she was, making this far more grandiose than it actually was. Let loose and all that. An edible would definitely be the way to go. And then, like, there's so many varieties of that too. I ordered quite a bit. I maybe promised Clem we'd share when we see them, so I wanted a variety. And what I got was some Camino. That's a really nice brand. And I got the watermelon lemonade and the wild three flavors. They both give different effects, but they're both great, so either will work. Some strawberry lemonade wana. I know quite the lemonade selection. Some watermelon live resin. A few blunts. I definitely wouldn't recommend that right now. And some CBD oil for when I don't actually want to be high. Do not ask me how much I spent just now, but while we're in a place where it's just legal without the need for a card, I just feel like we should capitalize, you know? It's totally up to you, whatever you'd like to try, and I'd understand if you'd want to just go with the oil, but if you do decide you want to go for it, I'll make sure to stay sober, as long as you let me have some of your munchie selections. Pearl's head spun for a whole new reason now, barely keeping up with an ounce of that. But that was also somewhat comforting. Sure, she was overwhelmed with the speech she just received, but that also meant that Helen knew what she was talking about, and offering to remain sober was just another layer to that. Helen would make sure she was okay through this. If she was going to get high for the first time around anyone, Pearl believed there wasn't a better person than her wife. Despite unwillingly beginning to shiver from nerves, she tried to remember that Helen would be here the whole time, and that even if anything happened, she would make sure she was looked after. She couldn't ask for a better setup, truly. She had this. Perhaps it was a migraine making time slow down? But it felt like an eternity that she laid shivering, awaiting the delivery. Helen had been paying special attention to her on this time, gently discussing with her some of the things she could do when the high kicked in, which would feel even better than normal. And when a phone chimed that the driver was here, she had made sure Pearl was laying comfortably, curled up around a pillow, before scurrying to the door to accept her spoils. So, we've got quite the selection here. Helen announced as she walked back over to the bed and laid the bag at the foot of it, reaching into it to rummage about. But if you actually wanted to get high, I could recommend the Camino, low dose and all that. I think they'd give you the best results. And hey, sometimes, she laughed with a hint of despondence. <laughs> with these, even if they don't fully take the pain away, you genuinely won't care about it. I know, it sounds fake, but I promise you won't. You just end up feeling so good otherwise that you don't care about the pain anymore. But again, it's totally up to you what you want to try. Just let me know. That sounded amazing, on God. If Pearl was going to break her lifelong streak, she may as well actually go for it, right? At this point, the oil seemed a bit like a cop-out. Feeling so good that she wouldn't even care if she was in pain? God damn, she wanted a part in that. She struggled to sit up and ended up wobbling, Helen rushing to assist her so she could sit back against the headboard to stop her from toppling. Easy, love. You haven't taken it yet. No sudden movements till you start feeling better. Your poor old body isn't quite ready yet. Helen warned in a comforting sort of way. And Pearl was overcome momentarily with how much clear love was present there. She was in such a lovingly caring place, one where she couldn't be hurt like she had been in the past ever again. No matter the memories which kept insisting on knocking her back down, in actuality, she was in the best place she'd probably ever been in. Helen would never allow her to go back. She was so absolutely blessed. I, I, I want to go for it, love. She admitted quietly, squinting through the blazing pain up at her. Helen couldn't look more excited if she tried, and she immediately squealed and stimmed her feet while scooping up two circular tins. <laughs> Alright, my sweet. Which one were you thinking? One is called Bliss, and the other's Chill. The Bliss makes you all bubbly and giggly, and yeah, and the Chill still makes you giggly, but more like a stoner, like. She dropped her voice and laughed slowly to demonstrate. <laughs> like that. Out of those two, I would personally go for Bliss, but whatever you want is good. Pearl considered that for a moment, but the giddiness to be trying this wasn't overriding the paint cloud in her head and thus it took some diligent consideration before she could even attempt to formulate a rational thought. Yeah, bl bliss sounds good, hun, I'd say. She was finally able to muster, and with that confirmation, Helen opened the tin with an audible pop and removed a gummy, sitting beside Pearl and gently pushing it into her hand. There you are, my dear, she said, Pearl clearly hearing the smile in her voice. <laughs> that should start kicking in pretty quick for it being your first time. Enjoy it, Pearl, genuinely. 
and before she could talk herself out of it, Pearl palmed it into her mouth and promptly began chewing. It was pleasantly fruity in flavour, but she could definitely tell it was laced, a vaguely vegetative taste hiding beneath the watermelon. She swallowed quickly before the taste could have a chance to properly cling to her mouth, as a migraine was still upsetting her stomach and she didn't want to give her system an excuse to make it any queasier than she had to be. As soon as she had swallowed it down, Helena surprised her by leaning forward and kissing her, darting her tongue into her locked mouth for a second before withdrawing and chuckling at the confused look drawn over Pearl's face. <laughs> I was just getting a little myself, dear. She laughed, before becoming more serious and continuing. I am so proud of you, Pearl. I know that was hard, but I really hope you end up enjoying it. Just keep a positive attitude and shake off any anxiety. The high won't be good otherwise. Other than that, have fun. Pearl just nodded, settling back against the headboard and laying her head back, closing her eyes for a moment as she imagined what this would feel like. Would she even know she was high? Was it a quick thing or gradual? Did it wear off fast? Would it take the pain away or just make her not care? She could hardly wait. She hadn't noticed she'd been so far in her imaginings that she'd mentally clocked out, and it was only when Helen sat back down beside her that she realised she'd been gone. She startled slightly in a more exaggerated movement than she meant to, exclaiming, Jesus babe, when did you get up? Her boisterous reaction surprised Helen, who jumped a little and responded, Sweet thing, I, I just caught up to put the edibles away and to peek at what they've got stocked here. I, I told you that, you don't remember? Her eyebrows pinched in concern at her. But Pearl had neglected the use of her glasses since arriving and thus couldn't tell. All she could do was reach out to put them on and respond. Oh, no. Do they have anything good? That was more like her, Pearl. Helen smiled in relief. She rested back against the headboard and stretched her sore legs out on the bed, making a groaning sound of effort. All well, the essentials, mostly. We'll need to do a grocery run tomorrow, I'd say. But they've got the basics, like some cereals and milk, don't worry, it's in date, and coffee and a few frozen meals. I think I might have seen some applesauce too, but my memory doesn't serve me at the best of times. She laughed in good nature, and Pearl nodded, before frowning. The basic movement had seemed to unsettle the world to an uncertain rocking which remained even after she herself came to a stop. But with this sudden giddiness, she noticed something else. While she assumed that, if the pain was to be removed entirely, she would no doubt notice its absence as a huge sense of relief, it took another symptom rolling in to realise that the migraine had released its grimy clutches on her and that she was finally free of the pain. She hadn't even noticed this disappearance. That didn't seem right. As she pondered this, an unusual yet strangely comforting wave of warmth had spilled down from the top of her head to fill her in her entirety, her eyes especially burning. This had to be the high, right? She had absolutely no idea what to expect, but this had to be it. Oh, wow. Were the first words out of her mouth, which she breathed out in a shivering exhale, while she rubbed her palm heels across her warm cheeks. The tip of her tongue felt as if it was sizzling, as well as a metal band beginning to squeeze it at its base. She felt as if she were moving in slow motion as she turned to Helen, instinctively reaching for her hand, who took it as soon as she became aware of its presence. <laughs> oh yeah, baby. You're so well, right? She asked in a different tone Pearl didn't remember having heard out of her before, at least not directed at her. She was sure she had heard her use it while interacting with their technical goddaughter, Aubrey. There were more legal guardians and godparents, there if anything happened to Rory and Maria. As it was a cutesy kind of tone with a hint of a laugh that many used to address children. It was a bit odd if she were being honest, but that wasn't to say she didn't somewhat enjoy it. It made her feel seen and cared about. She began sort of swaying as all she could do was giggle in response, <laughs> unable to help the huge grin which had broken out across her face. Before she hadn't been able to wrap her head around the prospect of feeling so good you didn't care about being in pain, but she was starting to understand now. She was so happy. I feel so heavy, <laughs> but like I'm floating too, it's crazy. <laughs> she mumbled through her giggles, clutching her feet as she swayed a bit too far and awkwardly fell into Helen, but she couldn't be more content with that. She gasped happily and erupted into drunken laughter, nuzzling to her armpit and exclaiming, Wow, you're made of the good things, baby. Like the softs and the goods. Helen's heart glowed at how adorably silly her wife was being, and she embraced her, just causing her to laugh even more. <laughs> oh dear, I think my beautiful girl is high. She crooned playfully before asking, Do you think you can handle me turning the light on now, sweetheart? I want to see your sweet little face right now. Pearl nodded as she began rubbing her fingers through Helen's short, fluffy hair totally transfixed. How was it doing that? 
how was it naturally two different colours? She had to dye hers to achieve two colours. It wasn't fair, but like it was fucking awesome too. God, her wife was amazing. Your hair is cool, she mumbled, somehow having wiggled herself onto her back, splayed out across Helen's lap once again, as the light was flicked on. Even though she was staring directly into the light and she would normally recoil after so long in the dark, all she did was keep staring, unblinking at that circular fixture embedded in the ceiling above her, open mouthed as a soft <laughs> laugh wafted from it. Oh baby girl, your eyes are so red, you look so high, are the ceiling in my hair interesting? Helen exclaimed in that same child addressing tone, and I sent butterflies skittering through Pearl's belly, a warm glow beginning to surge up from her chest only to simmer over and temper down. The band around the base of her tongue tightened and seemed to be growing and wrapping itself around different parts as well as. The room spun around her as she suddenly threw herself into a sitting position, and Helen rushed to make sure she didn't topple again. Easy, sweetheart, easy. You still don't want to be moving too suddenly just yet. You'll be feeling pretty dizzy for a while, but that's normal. Just take it easy for me, she instructed. The pearl was already on a whole new tangent. The butterflies reminded her of how otherwise empty her stomach was. But even if she had eaten properly that day, it felt as if she would still be ravenous regardless. Had she ever been this hungry before? She couldn't recall right then. Really hungry, Dr. Steele, aren't you? She raised her gaze as she asked this to meet Helen's eyes, who looked like her cheeks had flushed with a dopey smile on her face. Pearl couldn't for the life for figure out why and it just made her giggle. <laughs> you could definitely say that, Chef Steele. Helen chuckled while leaning forward to breathe a kiss against Pearl's neck. The usual chills far more pronounced this time. Almost sharp as they pricked her arms and down her back. And that would be the munchies talking, my love. Believe me, you're not gonna want to stop eating, even when you're physically full. Kind of fun, honestly. She reached for her phone, which had been placed in front of them both, and did something on the screen before handing it to Pearl. He looked down at it slowly, the phone itself feeling foreign in her hand. DoorDash was on the screen. You deserve to choose something nice for your first high. So order whatever you'd like, I'll shout you. That was so nice of her, what the fuck? Pearl thought she ought to let her know she appreciated that. And she had certainly intended on saying so. But when it came time to actually speak it aloud, her mouth couldn't work out how. She opened it and tried, but it didn't appear as if it was keeping up with her brain anymore. And all she could think to do was silently stare at her before looking back down at the dimly lit screen. Helen thought nothing of it, chuckling under her breath at how cute her girl was being, certainly not entertaining the possibility that anything could go wrong with this. And nothing really was going wrong right now, not really. Soon enough it would be, and neither were prepared for how that would play out. Sweetie, Helen's voice suddenly broke through Pearl's fuzzy awareness. You gonna be able to order, or do you need me to do it? It took an age of swimming through disorientation for Pearl to look up from the phone into Helen's eyes, and when she did, her expression confused her, mildly amused yet undoubtedly concerned. She felt as if she had swished her mouth with cotton balls as she attempted to add some lubrication by licking her gums, and managed to rasp out. This isn't my phone. Helen's eyes held the same expression as she smiled at her in response, laughing anxiously as she reached out to take her phone back. Oh love, you're adorable, she said, rubbing Pearl's hand with her other. Don't worry, I got it. I'll order you something from my personal favourite high food place. It'll hit the spot, or as you would say, it'll hit different. You'll see. By this point inconceivably ravenous, Helen made simple work of looking up Panda Express and punching in their usual orders, along with a Red Bull for her and a cream soda for Pearl. Normally her wife probably would have wanted a Red Bull too, but Helen didn't believe that would be the best thing to mix with weed so opted for a safer option. She also got onto Safeway and ordered some Sour Patch Kids and Peanut M&Ms, their favourite lolly combination and also a throwback to their Dear Evan Hansen theatre trip from a few months before, which they still joked about to that day, and a bag of Funyuns, so they had some options if either got a hankering after their meal. They would get actual groceries tomorrow, but tonight would be a night of pure junk, which they were content with. They were on vacation, may as well splurge a little. Sometime after this, Helen had gone on a search for the TV remote, which in actuality was probably less than a minute long. But to Pearl was an utter eternity. She listlessly watched her while pinwheels of confusing colours began to burst in her mind's eye, and her inside seemed to be swirling, sweltering within her. She'd heard once before someone referring to themselves as being baked or high. She was sure this had to be what they meant. Her half-lidded eyes were seeing still, yes, but the information she was taking in went nowhere further, none of it reaching her brain. The world spun and she sat swaying, the process of thinking being replaced with dead air. When there was a knock at the door while Helen was still up and she cheered quietly before answering it, Pearl just watched her, raising her hand as if to tell her not to go. 
She remained in that position until Helen returned, armed with a heavy-looking plastic bag and a big smile. Finally, we can eat! She exclaimed happily, and Pearl returned the smile and giggled, seeming to shift slightly from a state of static. Her belly rumbled audibly, and she reached out to do grabby hands at her, whining. Bites, bed, and baby, now! Helen burst out laughing at that, a beautiful sound Pearl felt wrapping around her skull and tickling her brain. It was odd though, as it entered her head it seemed to amplify and reverberate about as if it were being echoed through an abandoned concert hall. Its volume erratically bounced between a normal level and near impossible gain, with no rhyme or reason and it was frankly disquieting. Pearl hadn't the aptitude to visibly react to it, but regardless her heart began racing with the disorienting performance her head was putting on for her. There you are, sweetie. Eat up. You wanna watch Netflix or anything? I have a suggestion that I have found is the perfect baked watching experience. It's a bit after my time, but I bet you watched it as a kid. Helen laughed bemusedly as she slid Pearl's plate across to her and opened her own, practically drooling over the eggplant, tofu, brown rice and vegetable spring roll set out before her. She dug in basically straight away, while Pearl took quite a deal longer, still overcome by the discordant after effects of Helen's simple laughter. Thankfully, soon the amplified hunger swept to the forefront of her mind and she was able to open a container and begin shoveling down her meal without as much as probably taking in what it was. Oh my god. She moaned with her mouth full, eyes glazing over as she rather messily ate, sloppy being a good word to describe it. It was her favourite combination from Panda Express. Orange chicken, chow mein and chicken pot stickers. And Helen really was right. It really did be hitting different. And now that she had started, she didn't believe she'd actually be capable of stopping. All the various tastes practically exploded in her mouth and made her taste buds give her tongue a lap dance, and she was left the spectator throwing one dollar bills over them in awe of their erotic performance. She unwillingly made exceedingly lewd sounds as she ate to further accentuate how much pleasure she was deriving from this godsend. Eyes shut and body thrumming, she submitted to how fucking good it tasted and begged it for more. God, you think you were being fucked or something? Helen commented, not unkindly, but for some odd reason it rubbed Pearl the wrong way. She suddenly found it a little harder to take in a full breath, and she somehow stopped eating. Anxiety swirled and knocked against the inside of her skin, and she managed to protest. Can you please not say that? That had been the most coherent sentence she had spoken in close to an hour, and it startled Helen who had only been making a joke which would normally be commonplace for them to make at each other. She brought her attention away from the movie Pearl hadn't noticed she had turned on to stare across at her and the look on her face concerned her enough to push away her food momentarily and reach across to rest a hand on her knee. Oh, I'm I'm sorry, Pearl. I, I didn't mean to upset you or anything. You just sound like you were enjoying yourself. Are you feeling alright? Helen asked worriedly, and Pearl shrugged as she finally took notice that the TV was on. The live-action Scooby-Doo movie was playing. A classic, really. Pearl smiled as she swayed back, the grip on her lungs loosening subtly as she shook her head oh so slowly. Oh, good, goody, good. She mumbled somewhat dazedly, her belly butterflies flittering up to her head to swirl around in total confusion. One sensation was immediately replaced by the next, more often than not overlapping the other into a ridiculous blur she could set no proper focus on. She had already forgotten what had just happened, was confused by the lingering traces of nausea that had manifested as a result of it, but either way it was going to take another crack at the amazing food set before her. Helen really had been right, she couldn't fucking stop herself, and it was a little fun. It took a while for Helen to shake off her worry about that altercation, and even when she told herself she had, she hadn't really. She remained concerned when she had gone back to a meal, satisfied enough when Pearl appeared to be becoming engrossed in the movie, appearing also to be enjoying every minute of it. There wasn't a speck of food left in her plate, and she had somehow gotten a hold of the Funyuns, her hand disappearing in the huge bag every other second, constant crunching emitting from her. She sighed and shook her head with a smile, sipping from her Red Bull and trying to relax. It had been a long day. She was sore and extremely tired, but knew she should remain alert until Pearl was coming down on the off chance she needed her badly. She may as well give her body a little boost of energy to help her with that. But soon enough, the heavily greasy food and energy drink were beginning to not entirely agree with her, a distinct cramping present in her lower belly. She knew she would need to adjourn to the bathroom soon enough to handle that, but she really didn't enjoy the thought of leaving Pearl to her own devices, at least not for her first time, while neither was sure how she would react. She thus stayed as long as she could, trying to concentrate on the movie so to not focus on the awful pain in her belly, but soon enough even Pearl could notice that she was uncomfortable, and she knew she would be better off just going and dealing with it sooner rather than later so she could get back to her. So, clearing her throat to mask the low painful gurgles that occasionally growled their way out into the world, 
She got to her feet and made sure Pearl was focusing on her. Alright, Pearl, I, I need to go into the bathroom for a minute, and in the meantime, I want you to just relax and keep watching the movie. I'll be, I'll be back as soon as I can. I'll bring my phone, text me if you need me, or yell, it's not a big home. Helen instructed her while she uncomfortably shuffled her footing and tried not to grimace as she smiled at her. Pearl could barely take in what she was saying, though, so it didn't matter, really. All she did was stare at her, swaying and lightly slapping the sides of her calves, occasionally rubbing the skin where she was making contact with and letting out the odd giggle. She was off her head, not taking in a word she was saying, Helen knew that. And she also knew there was going to be a mess on their hands if she didn't get going. So she leaned down and pecked Pearl's forehead before turning on her heel and walking quickly into the bathroom, leaving Pearl alone in the room. The second mistake Helen had made that night in steering the situation in the direction it was headed to. But it wasn't really her fault. There was about to be something very specific occurring that neither could have actually prevented. And that was what was really at fault. Everything would come to a head, and this would be the final nail in the coffin. It might seem relatively small, but to Pearl's high, traumatized brain, it was anything but. Let's see a little of what I mean. When Helena tried to explain where she was going, Pearl's attention had entirely shifted away from the movie, and even though it was still playing loudly in the background, she'd forgotten it was even on, and her impulse was to seek out entertainment elsewhere. This led her to reach around for her phone, hand returning to habitually dip in and out of the Funyun bag which despite its size was steadily emptying into her stomach, which was steadily filling. Almost as if on autopilot, once she unlocked it, her finger automatically tapped the TikTok icon, as it was her habit to use it at least once every day. Her usual scrolling paralysis was so much more heightened currently, however, unable to break herself away from the monotonous task of dragging her thumb up her screen to see whatever her tailored algorithm conjured up for her to watch next. As her stinging, heavy eyes glazed over, she mindlessly ate up content and snacks, changing to the sour sweets for a palate cleanser and finally remembering she had a drink and cracking that open, guzzling the now room temperature soda which had softened in fizziness, but was still like drinking TV static. The refreshing flavour of vanilla drove out the overwhelming taste of onion, and even though she could feel that her stomach was uncomfortably full and she would have normally stopped eating long ago, she just couldn't help herself tonight, and ignored it in favour of the instant gratification she was getting with each huge bite. TikTok has this habit, though, of showing you a video completely outside of what you normally take in which either saddens or deeply disturbs you. When the sound of a man screaming in agony emitted from her phone as she scrolled once more, making her jump and clutch her chest, one of these had shown up. And Pearl couldn't look away. As the scream petered out, the point of the video became horribly clear. The heartbroken man was sobbing over a picture of his deceased father, who had taken his own life, and who had stopped his son from doing the same thing. He screeched about how could he do this, how could he stop him from doing it, and then do it himself. Pearl's breath suddenly became shaky as she could not for the life of her tear herself away, feeling sick when she saw that the man's own son clung to his quaking leg as his father vomited his long-standing anguish and grief all over the flowered memorial. A straight minute of volatile misery she knew all too well of a broken heart in active fragmentation. Before she knew it, she was letting it play a second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, and seventh time. Truly, she didn't want to watch it anymore, but something was keeping her from scrolling away. What was it? An odd feeling of kinship? A sense of emotional duty? Or something else? She couldn't be sure. But as his misery was repeated and recycled over and over in front of her, something was drastically changing inside her. Her heart was aching, feeling as if coming to a standstill despite actually hammering faster than ever, and her insides seemed to be crashing to a deafening stillness. Their only movement was this queer warbling she had no real way of describing, other than an artist's wavy lines to indicate shaking. Her chest was so tight she couldn't be convinced it wasn't physically scrunching in on itself, and her shoulders hunched forward as she unwillingly curled in on herself. She had a headache. But this wasn't the migraine back, not really. This was an entirely new affliction, brought on entirely from what this video was putting her body and soul through. This pain was a macabre reminder of how it had felt when she had heard the news of her own father's passing. The scream from the beginning of the video mimicked the harrowing sound her soul had produced when she was told over the phone that he had passed violently and painfully, dropping from standing height with an agonised howl dead before he hit the ground. She and Helen had only just begun their relationship and they had been driving home for one of Helen's rheumatology appointments when her phone rang. A nurse she was on first name basis with was on the other end, asking if she was alone and to pull over if they were driving. When the words left her mouth that her dad had been pronounced dead hours before, she had let out the most heart-rending scream. 
annoyed she hadn't known she was capable of producing, and thrown her head down on the dashboard to dissolve into sobs. Through her own tears, Helena had to be the one to continue the conversation, Pearl howling most disturbingly beside her, while she tried to explain that she wasn't even in the country, and they were unsure how they would be able to get back in time to pick up his possessions and to arrange the funeral. But they found a way. That was the first trip to America together. Once off the phone, Helen had broken down too, and they had sat on the side of the road just holding each other and crying their eyes out. Pearl apologising constantly to him and Helen telling her it wasn't her fault. But of course, they still had to get home somehow, and Helen had finished the remaining five hours with constant trails of tears streaming down her face, while Pearl sat broken and lost against the window, thoughts manifesting. Pearl, oh my god, turn that off! The startling voice of Helen sounded from the doorway. Pearl unable to bring her gaze up to meet hers, unable still to turn the video off. She struggled to take in a breath and found that she couldn't physically bring herself to complete it fully. That hadn't been enough air and neither was the next breath she attempted to draw inwards. She stared at the blanket in front of her through an inky haze, thunder strikes of coloured static audibly zapping her brain. Helen was scared of the way Pearl made no attempt to move or even to acknowledge she had re-entered the room and rushed over to her and snatched the phone from the bed, powering it down and pocketing it with a shaky hand so Pearl couldn't view anything like that anymore. She sat before her and gently tried to get her to look at her, but all verbal directions too were met with total silence. A sick sense of dread clutched her insides as she knew this had triggered her, and being triggered while stoned absolutely never ended well. This point was accentuated even further when Pearl began coughing. She didn't need to cough, really she didn't. She had no physical urge to, but she was doing it anyway. <laughs> Two coughs right after the other, and repeat in the exact same cadence and frequency every single time. The sequence repeated every other second, and this left absolutely no room for catching a breath, and even when she tried, her body refused to take in enough oxygen to make it worthwhile. Her breathing and coughing mechanism seemed possessed, completely taken over, and she was powerless to regain either. Her heart alternated between fluttering and thumping against her surely bruising ribs, and her head spun with a renewed vengeance. She could see herself struggling to breathe in her mind, her body warping and shifting into something that couldn't be called human anymore. This wasn't right, she wasn't in herself, she had no control of anything any longer. She tasted metal blooming in her throat. Is this what dying felt like? Sweetie, breathe. Listen to me. Please try and breathe. You're going to hurt yourself. Helen attempted to keep her voice level as she instructed her, slowly reaching out to clasp her chin and tip her head back slightly so she could see her face. There was absolutely nothing behind Pearl's eyes. As she constantly coughed and struggled to get her breath in edgewise, her eyes reflected none of this. There were zero signs of life, and she looked at her, but Helen knew she wasn't actually seeing her. The only people she had ever seen with that look in their eyes were patients she hadn't been able to save, ones who had slipped from this mortal coil despite all her best efforts. She had never before in her life seen it in someone who was still alive. That fucking terrified her, and she couldn't help but tear up slightly from pure anxiety this generated in her. She gulped and blinked it away, and against a better judgement, pulling forward to embrace her wife, who immediately braced in her arms, still heaving out coughs over her shoulder. From their hold, she became aware of how severely she was trembling, and how much she was struggling to breathe properly. She should never have let her get high. None of this enjoyment she had gotten from it was worth this. Should she tell Helen that she needed to go to hospital? Surely she had to, she was soon to be coughing up blood, and if this would continue like this even then, she wouldn't be able to stop, she knew that. She swore she would pass out, asphyxiate herself while begging her body to cease and give control back to her. At this point she kind of wished she would pass out, surely she wouldn't be able to cough anymore while unconscious, and maybe when she woke up she would be back in control. But she couldn't focus all of her attention on her perceived medical emergency, oh no. That man's screams reverberated about her clouding brain in the same way Helen's laugh from earlier had, raising in volume to a degree she wasn't sure how it was possible and gripping her soul in its grimy grasp. It was filling her in her entirety, requited grief draining into her blood to be pumped throughout her entire body to feed her brain and to corrupt it in the same breath. Every tiny image of subconscious conjured in her mind's eyes pulsed and thrummed, trimmed in erratically flashing colours, seeming to take on a sound of their own to conglomerate into a general din she couldn't help but be faced with. Birds flew overhead and ants crawled across her lap. She could see their car parked in front of them from where she sat huddled on the pavement. Death hugged her like a vice, leaking from her phone speaker and dripping down her chin. She wanted her dad. I want, I want to go bed. She mumbled in a dead voice which mimicked the look in her eyes, closing her eyes and resting her chin in Helen's hand, somehow at a stop in her coughing but still unable to take in full breaths. 
The cloying taste of blood still remained against her windpipe, but she was so dizzy, her banging heart sitting heavy in her heaving chest like a defiled headstone. She surged toward her, losing energy and inhibition quite quickly, and Helen was right there to hold her upright. Oh, baby, of course. Of course we can go to bed. Don't worry, I've got you. Nothing can actually happen to you right now. You might- Helen was cut off in her worried ramblings by Pearl continuing as if she hadn't even spoken. Yeah, didn't you go to bed? Helen nodded reassuringly as she quickly got up to get everything off the bed so they could lay down, Pearl somehow still managing to remain sitting as she did so, body jerking every time she inhaled. Yes, yeah, sweets, of course, of course go to bed. Helen confirmed tremulously as she bagged everything up and sat it on the bench top beside the bed, trying to maintain sight on her the whole time, never turning her back on her. The best thing she could do for her right now was to get the light and TV off and get her laying down so she could hold her and talk her out of this. Please remember, sweetie, this is only a bad trip. It can't actually hurt you. It will it will end soon and you'll be okay. I'll be here the whole time. I'm not going anywhere else. I'm so sorry I wasn't there before, but I promise I won't leave now. But... Pearl spoke up again, not appearing to have been listening. I, I can't... I can't sleep with... Helen focused on what she could be talking about and saw that she was gripping the material of her jeans over her legs saying that she couldn't sleep with uncomfortable pants on. While Helen understood the feeling, the fact she could even think about that was sort of laughable. But if it would help her to take them off, then she couldn't falter for it. She nodded. Okay, yeah, I, I get that, sweetheart. Do, do you need help with that? Pearl tilted her head this way and that, swaying and clutching her legs. She knew it was childish, but she actually wasn't sure whether she would be able to do it herself. She also didn't want Helen doing it, not that she didn't trust her, she couldn't explain it, she was just uncomfortable with that idea. But she truly was unsure whether she could do it on her own, and she shrugged, resting her hands in the waistband with intent but doing nothing to actually take them off. The moment she did, her heart flooded with pure panic and her blood boiled. <laughs> she loudly half moaned, half hyperventilated through heavily oxygenated refrains, a sound Helen recognized but thankfully didn't hear all that often these days. It never got any easier to hear, however, and she hurried to turn the TV off and rush over to her. I know, sweetie, I know, you got it. Just slip your legs out and you'll and you'll be all done, she instructed her gently. But Pearl could barely understand her, still making her panicked noises as she tremulously began pulling her legs from the jeans. But she didn't make it past her knee before tears flooded her eyes and she stopped mid-action. To Helen, this is what it looked like, but to Pearl, it was a whole other story. Helen was no longer in front of her, and she was no longer her adult self. It was Cain and he was forcing her to undress for him. There was no semblance of her wife left in front of her, and when she spoke to her, it came out as his out-of-breath voice crooning a cruel, Yeah, that's right, darling, instead. She silently sobbed before him, trying not to let her baby sister hear the terrible things this monster of a man was about to do to her. If she came in while he was going, he would involve her in it, and she couldn't let that happen. Never again. She sat in her purple bedspread, clutching her favourite teddy bear, Jerry, in her lap, unable to finish taking her pants off, but knowing she had to, otherwise he would do it for her, and the least time he spent touching her at all, the better. But she couldn't fucking do it. She knew what would happen as soon as she was done, and she hated that it was happening again. She wanted her dad. Oh my god, Pearl, you're crying! Helen exclaimed in a panic, deeply saddened by the fact that she had almost immediately began crying when she had come back into a line of vision. She hoped to god she hadn't done anything to scare her. Oh my god, I'm so sorry. I, I didn't mean to scare you. It's okay, you're safe here with me. I promise, love, I promise you. Please hear me and believe me. Turn off the light. Was all Pearl could work out how to say. Her voice shockingly level for how severely her tears were coming down. And Helen could do nothing else but what she was asked. Flicking the light off before sitting down next to Pearl. Resting her hand on her knee. He was hurting her. She felt sick every time he touched her. And now his hand was on her knee trying to comfort her through what he was doing, as if that negated it. She thought she had left this behind, she would fucking escaped him, but here she was, right fucking back there. What was the fucking point of escaping if it took practically nothing to get her back? She scrunched forward until her head was pressed against her legs, clutching a skinny upper torso, and immediately began loudly, properly <laughs> sobbing. Before it had been silent, but once one cry came loose, the others came flooding in behind her, and she was left practically screaming through her sobs. 
It had been quite a while since she had so violently been overtaken by the action of crying, no way she could have possibly stopped herself. There would normally be a certain degree of resistance, but this was different in the worst way possible. Oh shit! <laughs> Helen exclaimed, darting her hand away in an instant. The abruptness of every new layer to Pearl's situation was harrowing, but she knew logically the weed was heightening all of her emotions, making them that much more traumatizing to experience. And knowing what it looked like when she was deep beneath the depths of a flashback, she knew this was it. She couldn't even imagine how experiencing one more high would feel. If that was what Pearl was currently going through, she had to swallow her anxiety down and talk her out of it. She couldn't allow herself to exacerbate the situation any further. She'd already done enough of that. Pearl had plenty of adverse sexual experiences under her belt. One such being arguably the worst and not even being at Kane's hands. Right now she couldn't be certain, but she was sure that event was the one her body was currently reliving. As she could feel more than one person was involved. He was the thing. She couldn't see anything. She had gone absolutely blind and couldn't see the action unfold. Instead, each and every one of her senses had to fill in the blanks, and boy were they doing a stellar job. She heard the background noise of the party raging from downstairs and the bed creaking beneath her while the group of five men laughed at and degraded her, hissing for her to stop resisting and forgive herself to them all. You fucking cunt, shut the fuck up before you get us in deep shit! One whisper shouted at her, another chiming in in the husky growl. You're lucky it's just you. That sister would have made this so much better. She could hear herself screaming, sobbing and begging her to stop. She made the exact same noises in the present. Now you fucking talk about her like that, you foul sons of bitches! She yelled with everything she'd had, but she was already beginning to lose her voice from how extremely she was spitting her verbal venom. That's what came out wheezing and horrifically cracked. She had a disgusting chorus of deep groans as whoever wasn't using her, and there were at least two on her at a time, manually pleasured themselves at the spectacle. She heard her screams gurgle as she vomited blood into herself. She heard that they enjoyed them. She tasted the acidic crust which clogged her airways, and the many different phallic members she was forced to stimulate. She smelt the thick, pungent odor of Jack Daniels, cheap spirits, unwashed bodies, and blood, urine, vomit. The smell of sex could be a wonderful thing, but now it smelt of violence, tragedy, and utter misery. All it did was hammer home to Pearl what was happening to her and remind her that she had not really escaped the clutches of sex abuse. This new country had enough of that for her too. And what did she feel? Well, she felt everything. Every. Fucking. Thing. She felt her beaten body being held down by her arms over her head, his hands digging in so deep she got bruises within a minute. She felt her mouth being forced open either by fingers or flesh, her jaw locking. She felt bruises blooming beneath her huge hands which were pressed deep against her inner thighs, forcing her legs apart when she desperately wanted to close them. She felt her body thrashing under the steely holds keeping her down, trying to kick the one between her legs away and to pull her arms out from underneath his grasp. She felt her nails stinging from where she had desperately raked them across one of their chests, the reason why her arms were now pinned. She felt her entire torso scrunching on every shrieked exhale, petrified stomach acid yo-yoing up and down her airways, she felt the cool blade of the knife being pressed into her throat, cutting deeper every time she struggled, which was pretty well every other second. She felt blazing pain searing in her sides from where she had without question had quite a number of her ribs broken. She felt each breath further ripping her bones apart, every frantic beat of her heart slamming against a grid of bone dust. She felt the excruciating agony always present in her privates as she was tortured with various objects and various men, could feel the traumatized blood slowly but surely draining from it. She could feel that same blood soaking into the towel they had put down on the mattress beneath her. They couldn't let the evidence of their horrific crime be left behind after all. She felt herself being violently violated for a full hour. And by the time they had used her up and she was no longer making any attempts whatsoever to fight back, just laying there with a glazed over look and her still crying eyes as she desperately disassociated away to protect herself from the disgusting assault. They left her there, hissing at her to clean herself up before she dared leave. She had remained laying in a mess of multiple of her own bodily fluids, an empty body while her soul had completely been sucked free from her, too exhausted and traumatized to do anything else but cry, unmoving while blood continued to pour from her. She had been heartlessly and mercilessly gang raped, for no other reason than being alive in their space. Why hadn't they just fucking killed her afterwards? The only thing that had gotten her up on her feet, immediately wheezing out a tiny and hoarse scream of pure agony flaring in her sides and between her weakly wobbling legs, 
It was that she had to get her sister out of there. There were dangerous people here and she couldn't let anything like this happen to her as well. This is what Pearl's body and soul were reliving, but all that looked like was very intense crying. But that told some truly frightful tales all on its own. Helen certainly understood how deep from her being this anguish was stemming from, and she couldn't possibly be more heartbroken for a poor girl than she was right then. If this was how she reacted to weed, Helen would never suggest her do it again. Not if this was the outcome. I know you probably can't hear me at all, love. She finally began, having been totally frozen in shock and guilt from how this whole situation was so extremely secured for a good few minutes when Pearl had finally began breaking down, but Pearl had been completely unaware of the silence, so it didn't really matter in the long run. Once she'd recovered, however, she wasn't about to be silent anymore. Try to focus on this if it's at all possible. She shakily swallowed back the painful mass in her throat, unable to help reacting but knowing it wasn't conducive. This will be over soon. This is just a really bad trip, but it'll leave your system and nothing you're experiencing can actually hurt you right now. I promise you may feel like you're dying right now, but I promise you you're not. Please try your best to listen to my voice, feel my hand on your back. She paused to rest her palm against the contorting surface of her back and to take a deep breath, her chest aching terribly. Feel me there. Whatever you're feeling right now, it's not real. I am real. This hand is real. My love is real. Your safety is real. Please believe me, Pearl. Please. I should have thought not to let you do this. It's so clear you weren't in the headspace for this, but God, have I been able to stop you from watching that fucking video? Maybe you could have been okay and not have had such a bad first experience. I'm so sorry, Pearl. I... Helen trailed off and she realised she was being blinded by tears, blinking them away as best she could and raising her sleeve up to wipe at her eyes, sniffling wetly. She was unwilling to allow herself to react emotionally, however. That was the last thing Pearl needed while being supported through something like this. The last thing you did was make it about you. <laughs> Sorry. I didn't mean to go there. There's no point in even saying that. Really, like, it's already happened and all I can do is try and get you back now. So I'll wait as long as you need me to, love. Work through this the way you need to and when you're ready and able to come back, I'll be right here waiting to love on you and make sure you know without doubt how safe and secure you are now. I'm so sorry that was ever a dime you won and I'm absolutely so sorry that I ever made you feel that way too. I hope you know how absolutely loved you are by me, and that you know your dad loves you, my mum, and Perry, and Wilson, and Maria, and Rory, even though Aubrey loves you to pits. We have a small family with the amount of love it has and more that makes up for it. Even though it's only me with you right now, when I get to hold you again, it will be all of their arms around you. We'll all be right here, making sure you know that you're alright. If I could bring everyone back we've lost, I would have done so already, in a heartbeat. But when it comes to loving you, they're here just as much as everyone else. I've not heard you cry like this in such a long time. It's the worst sound in the world, sweets. She eventually ended up trailing off on her speech. It was so clear Pearl couldn't hear her at all. It was becoming difficult to talk without her trembles being audible. She thought the best thing she could do right now is keep a constant hold on her and sit with her to wait this out. She loathed the fact she couldn't just take her right out of it, but she reasoned that clearly Pearl had had something going on in her head she had needed to work through, and as terrible as this must be for her, it could only end up a good thing to be forced to confront whatever it was with zero discretion. Maybe then she could actually get some peace as she so deserved to. So, Helen scooted closer by a margin and laid her hand against her back gently tracing indistinct patterns against the material of her hoodie, as Pearl would often have her do on the best of days. Perpetual physical attention, that was Pearl's love language, Helen thought to herself in sad amusement, hoping her wife could feel the familiar emotion she was drawing on her skin, but she knew deep down she couldn't. It wouldn't hurt, however, for that to be the first thing she felt when she resurfaced again. There they sat for another twenty minutes, Twenty agonizing minutes. Pearl remained crumpled over, her powerful sobs never faltering in ferocity even when she would normally have grown tired by now and quietened down. Further proof Pearl was no longer in her body anymore, the veins reflecting flashbacks and nothing else. Helen sat beside her drawing constant patterns despite her arms stiffening. Did that really matter right now? She held her breath every now and then to stifle down any tears of her own, wishing more than anything that Pearl would just come back to her. Then she could actually do something to help. 
She was utterly useless through this part. Whispered encouragement every now and then fell on deaf ears, and she conceded that she would save her voice for when Pa was conscious again, and would actually be able to accept the help. Through a great haze unrivaled, Pa was slowly dragged from the intense grip the flashback had had on her, finally starting to come to. She moaned through her tears, actually managing to take in a proper breath for the first time since she started going south. She couldn't move still and couldn't open her eyes for fear of what she would see, but this was definitely a start. She hopelessly ached, humid adrenaline unloosening within her chest just yet, and in an instant it was jolting suddenly and she heaved a heavy cough toward the blanket beneath her, a sick tightness gripping her airways and upper torso. To her perception, the next heaving cough seemed to filthy spraying of sick pouring over her legs. But in actuality, she was just still shaking off her sensory maladies and she had made no mess. Almost immediately, she felt a hand in her back beginning to rub up and down, and she thanked his presence while gagging at herself, so sure she was making the biggest mess right now. Take deep breaths, baby. Don't worry if you need to be sick. I'd rather you let it out right here than holding it in. Helen's fucking beautiful voice suddenly broke through the roaring nausea clogging her ears, and took all her strength to nod in response, but was confused as to why she was saying it was okay if. But she already had it. It was still painfully full stomach, sloshed noisily with every witch, and while she herself felt the sick she had expelled dripping off of her and pooling in front of her, all she had managed to bring up was some strains of saliva and nasal mucus, and all she was doing was tiring herself out even more than she already was. But she couldn't stop. Her body had been re-traumatized all over again, and vomiting was a way it was trying to purge itself. Unfortunately, she wasn't actually doing it then. <laughs> She moaned through the gagging, pressing a hand to her abs in an attempt to persuade her to calm down, but it seemed to be working, as she slowly felt the urge to gag tapering down, and she was able to get full of breaths in. It still felt somewhat manual, but nowhere near to the extent it had been, which she was truly thankful for. The continued presence of Helen's hand on her back acted as a sort of anchor she could grab onto, and soon enough she felt her consciousness dripping back into her, away from what had just happened. She was still extremely high, but she would have rather to be out of her system by now. She swayed dangerously as she attempted to straighten herself, her back having been particularly paining at the crunched position she had been in for close to a half hour. Helen immediately was grabbing hold of her so she couldn't fall, guiding her down so she was laying curled on her side. Steady, Pearly. I think being horizontal is going to be the best thing for you right now. Just trust me on that one. Helen warned her, and Pearl could clearly hear the tired edge to her voice, which before had been nothing but soft. She did no fighting. Okay. She was so exhausted. Every last little bit of her energy had been thoroughly sucked. This had been a terrible day, and all she wanted to do now was forget, to be held, and to come down. Still feeling herself shivering almost feverishly, she gulped down a still remaining nausea and mumbled a quiet. Please hold me. To a sleepy surprise, just as she had finished talking, she heard Helen sniffle thickly, and then a catch in her breath, before she knew that Helen was crying. It was by no means as loud as hers had been, but it was still undeniable. She knew how she worked and sounded by now. At least she had given her life a pretty big scare. Oh, Helen. Go and sell you, sweetheart. Anything you want. Helen responded in a tight, higher than normal voice, grimacing as she furiously scrubbed at her eyes and nose, and laid down to face her, immediately pulling her towards her. She proceeded to practically crush Pearl in her embrace, cupping the back of her head on top of her back and quietly crying with her chin on Pearl's shoulder. Pearl could easily feel her trembling, and she instinctively returned the hug, whispering a barely audible, I'm sorry. No, I will stop you right there. Helen held herself off for long enough to reassure her, as it was not at all a Pearl's place to apologise. The wobbling pitch returned to her voice as she continued. You did absolutely nothing wrong. You couldn't help this whatsoever. I won't hear you apologising for shit. I, I won't deny that that was really hard to watch, but I know you would have done the same thing if you were watching me, and it was at least harder for you to experience. I'm not going to stop myself from reacting now that, now that you're back, but there's nothing for you to apologize for, not a single thing. Despite herself, Pearl couldn't help but yawn, stretching a little while her heart warmed by Helen's words. Mm, okay. She mumbled, half drunk from fatigue. She could hardly remember a time she'd been so tired before. But wait. Yes, she could. 
She moaned from the intrusive memory, clinging to Helen while she buried her face into her arm. I'm so fucking tired. I can't stop thinking about it. It just won't leave. You, you weren't you anymore. I don't know where you went. It wasn't you. Fuck, I'm tired. I feel like I'll pass out, kind of. She moaned with clear anxiety Helen instantly picked up on, going to kiss her far but thinking better of it. Is it okay if I kiss you, sweetheart? She asked, and Pearl deliriously nodded. So Helen pressed her lips to her forehead and withdrew, beginning to draw on her back again. The way she felt Pearl melt into her arms, it was practically delicious to know she could make her intense at all right now, much less to this extent. She could see Pearl's probably even redder eyes squinting from exhaustion at her, and felt her heart being gripped for a moment before being released. She again tried to keep her voice as level as possible when she responded honestly. Honestly, that's probably what you'd want by this point, lovey. I recommend trying to close those tired eyes of yours and getting some sleep. You really desperately need it after this fucking shithouse day. Pearl distantly smiled and gave a tiny, high giggle, which was absolute music to Helen's ears currently. To hear something so simple as her laugh at a time like this was a godsend. It reminded her that, through all the bad, there were good things like that that always remained, if you just looked hard enough for them. They were going to be okay, really they were. They were stronger than any of their past experiences, and none of it mattered when they had each other to lean on and get through it with. That was one constant that could always be counted on. Through it all, neither were ever alone through their suffering, and never would be. Through her own uncoming unconsciousness, Helen heard Pearl whisper as if telling this grandiose secret. You're pretty. And then her breathing immediately evened out, and Helen knew she'd fallen asleep. Just like that. She stared at her for a moment, wondering how she could fall asleep that fast, before she smiled a heartbroken smile and breathed another kiss between her thankfully closed eyes, continuing to draw on her, on the off chance she could still feel it. This had been a terrible day. Fuck. <laughs> Helen whimpered to herself, gulping it back for a moment before the cries rattling in her chest broke loose, and she buried her face in the pillow to muffle the sound. She clutched her chest, which felt like it would pitch her heart free from it and covered her mouth to further stifle herself. Pearl really did need the sleep, she couldn't wake her back up so soon. But she hurt so fucking bad, that had hurt her so badly. How could she ever expect it to not? So while Pearl finally slipped into a dream not plagued by the horrors she had just been forced to relive again in their entirety, Helen laid in the dark alone, sobbing into a pillow, thoughts manifesting.